I always believed that uh, that I would be a millionaire, and I think originally my goal was like to try to hit that by 30. Ended up surpassing that by a decent amount. This is the moment. My name is Graham Stephan, I'm 29 years old, I make 1.6 million per year, and I live in Los Angeles, California. And welcome to, wait for it, Millennial Money. So I'm a full-time real estate agent, real estate investor, and YouTuber. Every day is gonna be a little bit different. Some days I'm gonna be out with clients showing properties, other days I'm gonna be planning YouTube videos, and some other days I'm going to be looking at properties for myself to invest in. My mortgage is just over $2,800 a month. The market value of the other unit next to me is about $2,500 a month. Then between the equity I get and the tax write-offs from using the garage as my office, it basically works out to be a free place for me to live. So I spend about $200 a month on groceries and I do price shop between grocery stores. I'll kind of make the rounds and just stock up on whichever item is the cheapest at which store. Every morning I have my same two eggs with ham and cheese and uh, half a bagel with store-bought generic brand cream cheese is, is my favorite to do that. I refuse to spend money on two things. Number one, I think everyone knows is uh, coffee. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, the markup of coffee at Starbucks and coffee bean and a lot of those places out there, so I just make it at home for 20 cents. Also, designer clothing. Don't see the point in going and spending $700 on like Gucci shoes, so I end up saving about 99% of my income just because my income is so high and I keep my expenses so low and most of the properties just kind of like pay for my living expenses so anything else I make is really just seen as a bonus and I save and invest it. So I got into real estate basically as soon as I turned 18 years old because I had no other options. I didn't get into college. I had really bad grades in high school and I saw getting my real estate license honestly is a way where I could just get one year of work experience and then reapply to colleges. But it turned out to be a career I really loved. So I ended up living with my dad for the first few years. I moved out in my early 20s and that was when I bought another property. The first property I bought was when I was 21 years old. It was a short sale for $59,500 in San Bernardino. It was a foreclosure that was being sold by the bank. And at the time, I had been saving up as a real estate agent, basically using all of my commissions, just putting it in a savings account. I bought that property in cash. It actually uh, appraised and was refinanced for like $260,000. My investing strategy really hasn't changed since I was 21, and all of it has really just been about real estate. If anything, I'm just looking to buy more expensive real estate now that makes a little bit more money, but otherwise, I've just kept doing the same thing over and over again. I had no idea that anyone would actually watch me, and I had no idea that I can actually make any money doing this, so I started it really just with the intention of having fun. I'd always wanted to do it, but I also felt like, who would want to watch me? And I felt like I didn't have the personality for it, and I just felt like, you know, I, I should probably postpone it, but I just made a video one day, spur of the moment, it was a slow open house, and I just filmed with my iPhone, the selfie side, just talked about how I got started in real estate. And that was such a fun experience and I remember that video getting like 9 or 10 views and just being like, oh my god, like 9 people have seen this video. So I started making more videos and once I started doing about 2 videos a week, it's just the growth really just exploded it seemed like. I would say 99.9% .9 of the comments are so positive and so supportive. I absolutely love them and it really feels like a sense of community. Then you get some funny ones. Um, the negative comments at this point, I'm so used to them. Then after a while, I, I, I think I realized that it has more to do with them and their own problems that they portray onto you than it does about you. So right now, probably like 85% of my income is affiliated with YouTube in some way or another, and then the remaining 15% is through real estate sales or real estate investments. 
Yeah. So since I've always been self-employed, I've never had a formal like 401k, but I do have a SEP 401k. I've thrown some money in there at the end of the year, just if it's left over, just as a hedge. But then as far as savings are concerned, I always like to keep about twenty to $30,000 in one of my checking accounts just to cover anything that could come up in the short term or to draw from if I have any expenses that come up. But other than that, all of my other money is spread out through several high interest savings accounts. So coin collecting was actually something I really got into as a kid. For some reason, I found it really cool to collect like old American coins and paper money. And what I would do is go across the street from where I would work to a bank and the bank teller knew me and she knew me because I would go in and always ask for like any old money that she would have. Some lady came in the bank and exchanged $200 of all just like perfect condition $10 bills from 1934. So some of these are worth up to $200 depending on the condition. Others are worth more like 40 to 50. So I wouldn't really consider these an investment. Like I think it's probably way better for me to put my money in the stock market than it is for me to get like, you know, old money and just keep it for a long time. But this is just a fun hobby. It's also from YouTube that I was really able to branch off into other aspects of this as well in the sense that I was able to create two programs. One of them teaches people how to work as a real estate agent and build their career. The second program that I created was uh, how to teach people to grow on YouTube. And both of those this year have probably done a little bit over 300 and something thousand dollars in sales. And since it's all online, that's pretty much all profit. There's almost no overhead whatsoever with that. Very much like it gives you a little jolt there. So I bought my Tesla in April of 2019. You get so many rebates back for it. The financing is so cheap. Everything that went on with the car, I calculated that it was going to cost me $78 a month out of pocket net in the first year, not counting the opportunity cost of then having all the money left over that I could then go and reinvest. So I figured like depreciation is going to be minimal. I'm going to get some really great tax write-offs from it. So it's going to almost be a free car. And I figured like, oh, you know, that's the video I'm going to make. Then that video ended up getting now almost 6 million views. I think the total cost of the car with everything all out the door with taxes and like all of the options, everything was like 44 grand. So I ended up making money from getting the car. Well, I think we only lost like two or three pasta noodles. So I think we did pretty good. So I have an amazing girlfriend and her and I share a lot of the same values in terms of saving and spending money. And I find it fun that she is just as frugal as I am. So we can have a great time trying to figure out like where is the best happy hour spot and like how we could save a little bit more money doing this. And she's the one too that's also very encouraging of like, we don't have to go out tonight to happy hour sushi. She doesn't sound like that by the way, but, but she encourages me to like, you know, we could go cook food at home or instead of going out to see a movie, we could just pop something on Netflix. So one of the things we actually do when we go out is we will end up just splitting a meal because usually I'm not hungry enough to eat the entire thing myself and neither is she. So we could basically get food for two by paying for one. It's really cool to have someone in your life like that who I see as just being an equal on every single level with the same mindset. Okay, I know it sounds weird too, but I do end up rewarding myself every now and then at McDonald's from the dollar menu. I don't ever eat McDonald's, but I just decided to go just because it was there and I was really hungry. I had two of the double cheeseburgers from the dollar menu and it was so good that now it gets to the point where I will purposely use that as an incentive to get all my work done. And if I'm able to do that before like midnight, I go and get the two double cheeseburgers. It's not something that happens too often, but it does become this thing where it's like, that's my treat. Thank you. Oh, it smells so good. There's something about the smell that's just like, how is it, how does it smell so good? So in terms of net worth goals, I really don't have any and I have no desire of becoming a billionaire. I don't even know what I would possibly do with that amount of money. I would like to hit 10 million. I feel like that would be just a decent number. The only thing I really want to do is travel that I haven't done. That's the only thing, but I could do that if I wanted to. It's just not the right time to do that. You don't need to be as extreme as I am. You don't need to skimp on every purchase at all. You don't need to work 12 hours a day, 
but you do need to think outside the box and you do need to be creative and leverage your time appropriately. But I love it and I love the challenge of, of saving and trying to handle my money well and, and grow it. No one is more frugal than I am. <laughs>